The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to Luke Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. He replied to him, Friend, who appointed me as your judge and arbitrator? Then he said to the crowd, Take care to guard against all greed, for though one may be rich, one's life does not consist of possessions. Then he told them a parable. There was a rich man whose land produced a bountiful harvest. He asked himself, What shall I do, for I do not have space to store my harvest? And he said, This is what I shall do. I shall tear down my barns and build larger ones. There I shall store all my grain and other goods, and I shall say to myself, Now as for you, you have so many good things stored up for many years. Rest, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool! This night your life will be demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, to whom will they belong? Thus will it be for all who store up treasure for themselves, but are not rich in what matters to God. The Gospel of the Lord Our Gospel for this Sunday is taken from St. Luke. We have been reflecting on work, working for true living, working for true and genuine life. Oh, work is important, but what is the purpose of it? And what type of life is our work trying to promote? In the first reading from the book of Ecclesiastes, hard questions about labor are presented to us. You give yourself totally to your work, and your work bears fruit. But then at the end of your life, the fruits of your labor are enjoyed by someone, maybe your family members, who did not work at all. And so what's the point of your work? You work, yes, and you progress, but then in the meantime, you lose sleep, you lose peace of mind, you become anxious. So the point of the first reading is, yes, keep on working, but do you know the purpose for which you labor? What is the meaning of life? What is the meaning of the life that you are trying to attain? In the second reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians, we have St. Paul presenting to us a fundamental work. And it is not just work in terms of a craft. It is not just work that is just uh, one aspect of, uh, of life, but it is the work called your person, the work called your life itself. And so St. Paul is saying that as you live on earth, may your heart be in heaven. May your concerns be the concerns of God so that you would become a new creation, so that everything rooted in earth would be put to death and you will live in Christ. Everything in you is Christ. That is a fundamental work, brothers and sisters, working on myself so that I become like Christ. In the gospel, we have someone telling Jesus, please be an arbiter between me and my brother so that he would give me my share of the inheritance. So this person probably wanted now to get his money and then he would engage in business, make it grow. But Jesus says, who am I? I am not an arbiter. And given that situation about money, inheritance and working so that your future is secure, Jesus gives us valuable lessons about the importance of work, but the importance also of working for true life. Jesus gives a parable, and through the parable, we have these lessons. The first lesson is this. The rich man in the parable 
Well, it's a secure person. He's already rich. But, oh, what luck. He had a good harvest. And so his problem was, wow, the harvest is so good, but my barns are too small. Where will I store this uh, plentiful harvest? And his decision is to tear down the old barns and to construct bigger ones. And then he'll say, I will be secure. So with all the harvest in my barns, I can eat, drink, relax, and enjoy myself for the rest of my life. And the Lord in the parable says, Oh, you fool, tonight you will die. And to whom will all of this piled up wealth go? In other words, yes, you accumulated wealth, but for whom? For what? And the answer there is, for himself. Only for himself. That is what Jesus calls greed. He never thought of other people. He never thought of neighbors. All the work, all the accumulation was for himself. And he himself realized he did not need it at that moment. There is more than what he needed, but he was so focused on himself, just working for himself. Greed. And the parable of Jesus reminds us, oh, no matter how greedy you are, your life will end. And when you're dead, you won't be able to enjoy what you have accumulated as wealth on this earth. So you don't work for greed. Working for greed means death. It is not working for life. Which brings to the final lesson. Jesus says, accumulate wealth, but not here on earth. Accumulating wealth here on earth for myself is greed. And that's not the way to live. Accumulate riches in the heavens. Be rich in the sight of God. Very similar to what St. Paul in the second reading tells us. Yes, work on the values of Jesus Christ. Be rich in the sight of God. Think of neighbors. Think of the poor. Work also for them. Work in this project called love, empathy, compassion. And when that is your work, sharing with others, then you accumulate riches, but not here on earth, but in the heavenly realms. And that's where life is found. My dear brothers and sisters, today is the 31st of July, the feast of St. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Society of Jesus. St. Ignatius, in his spiritual exercises, encourages us to work. But to work for what? To work for the kingdom of God. To labor for the kingdom of God. And to be generous in that labor. For the kingdom of God deserves all of ourselves. Energy, mind, talent. For it is not for myself but for the glory of God and for the good of others. And when you labor for the kingdom of God, you don't count the cost. The only reward that you expect and hope for is that you're able to do the will of God. That's true labor, and that's working for true life. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it.